because there's not much of this on YouTube, so I'd, I would hope to help some folks out. I'm going to be installing a, a roof mount air conditioner into a bus, so um, they're they're mostly most of them are similar whether it's a MCI or a, an Eagle or a Prevo uh, whatever you may have it should be a very similar installation um, things that you're gonna have to have um, when you go to do this um, first off you're going to need a grinder an angle grinder probably gonna need a reciprocating saw and a drill um, and then also you're going to for your install you'll need inch and a half uh, 11 gauge uh, tubing steel tubing and uh, there are some very very important things that you need to know uh, when you are doing this because the roof of your bus um, is aluminum and more than likely if you're doing like I am I'm replacing the existing interior uh, ceiling panels uh, those panels are also made out of aluminum so when you go back to uh, install those panels uh, over the steel that you're, you're going to be bracing it up, uh, so when you go to do that, you're going to need to remember to put butyl tape over the top of those frames, I guess you could call them. Um, this is what, uh, let me go outside and I'll kind of show you what our metal frames look like. Now, I'm, I'm not the best welder in the world, so don't, don't look at my welding job, but um, this is what our metal frames look like. Uh, they're just a square frame and what you need is from here to here and from here to there needs to be 14 uh, 14 to 14 and a quarter inches okay so it's an inch and a half square tubing uh, so um, when you decide that you you know the, the 14 by 14 is the um, dimensions that are used for all air conditioners uh, that's that's just the universal uh, size so you want to remember that uh, from here to here is 14 inches but when you go to weld this into your framework this is an inch and a half and this is an inch and a half so you have to add three inches to that 14 inches so you've got 17 inches from this point to that point uh, so you have to remember that when you go to do your work uh, when you uh, go to uh, cut, make your cuts and everything uh, into your framework. Uh, so the way this goes is I'm going to show you a few uh, things that I've already done. We've just put one unit in, so um, I'm going to show you the one that we've already got in. It's already installed and it's already up here, as you can see in the roof. And uh, so that one's already up there. Um, you can see that there's a, a long Right here, this is this is a long piece of um, steel. It's it's inch and a half. It's actually a little bit bigger than inch and a half. It's not as heavy gauge as what it's, it's not 11 gauge. We found that out, but uh, it's a big long uh, member that goes right down the center of your roof line. Okay, so that's what you have to cut, and uh, in order to um, in order to put your air conditioner in the middle of your bus. Now, I've seen some people put it on the sides and I just think that looks hideous. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to do it right, you have to cut into this and you have to uh, actually put your framework and everything in there. Now the framework is so important because if you don't get your framework in there, um, you're, you're gonna have a leak. Uh, if you don't have a good seal up there, uh, it has that unit has to have something to come down on to press tightly to, to close that seal and uh, so if you don't have that good and tight and if you don't have a good uh, framework up in there uh, then then you're gonna have a leak when you install your your air conditioner and nobody likes leaks so um, I am actually to a point in in this to where I'm gonna show you the video of, of what are, where I'm at um, right now as you can see I've already um, I've marked my 17 inches from here to here so that's where the frame is gonna sit up in there uh, and then I've also got marks up here where this is where the actual hole that goes in the roof will have to be now that actual hole can only be 14 inches so be sure that you don't cut past that 14 inch mark and what I have done to make it easier is I have went ahead and got some holes in here I did that with a hole saw I just got those holes in there. I'm gonna. I've already grinded out 
this part right here a little bit, but I can't get all the way to it because the wheel uh, gets caught here. I, I've only got a four and a half inch wheel, so if I had a little bit bigger wheel, I could grind it all the way up to that. Uh, but uh, since I don't have I don't have a bigger wheel, I have to stop at that point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reciprocating saw, and I'm just going to cut this whole thing. I'm actually going to uh, have two more holes. Uh, like these on the other side that will receive me over there but uh, I'm uh, getting ready to get my reciprocating saw and zip this member from here to here and from here to there and that will take down the bulk of that part of the frame and when I get that frame down um, then I can get back up in here with my grinder and grind this off now here's the thing about this I don't know if your bus will be this way or not but you need to pay attention really closely this right here, this part above, this, this lip right here that's above this framework, when you measure from here to here, you get about uh, right at one and a half inches, which is the size tubing that you're gonna need, okay? But this, the, the framework, the way they do this is it has a lip on the ends of it to where it can catch these uh, rivets, okay? So what you wanna do is you want to leave, or what I've done is I have left this part of it and I'll show you of course later when we get to that part but I have left this part all the way across and we'll just weld that member in on top of that because if you don't your inch and a half uh, tubing is not going to come down flush with with this member here on each side so I've left that little piece right there so you can uh, you can actually have a place uh, to weld here but that's where we're at right now, and I'm getting ready to go ahead and zip this off. I'm going to hand, hand the camera off to someone else if she would not mind taking, doing some camera work here for a second. Let's be taking it out of here too before we Okay, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to drill these holes in here on this side, on the other side of this, and then I'm going to take my reciprocating saw and I'm going to cut straight over. So she's going to, she's going to hold the camera here real quick while I do that. And I couldn't believe how easy this this actually drilled a hole in this. Uh, it is just aluminum, but um, it actually goes through it pretty quick. Actually, my bit is a little bit wobbly here. Let's fix that. always wear your safety goggles when you're doing this because metal shards are going to go everywhere and be sure you have anything that you don't want metal on covered up and it was just that easy to get through there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish by putting another hole on this side and then I'll get my reciprocating saw and cut from here to there So we've got the holes in and now we're getting ready to cut this member loose from here. Now one big thing you want to make sure that you do not do is you don't want to cut any more than you, you're supposed to. Now I've got it clearly marked here where my 14 inch line is for my box. I don't want to get close to that because you know using a reciprocating saw you know that they're not, they're not really that accurate so you can't control them very well. I'm going to make sure that I stay away from that 14 inch line. So I'm going to try to go right down the center of this. Now I did put these holes out here close to where that is to make it a little bit easier for me when I go to grind it. Uh, but uh, I will be using the grinder to make sure that that all gets, uh, that the, the actual hole uh, is the right size. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip through this all the way to the other side and zip through that all the way to the other side and this whole member will be loose at that point. Then I can grind from here to here, or I can uh, zip from here to here and there to there, and then that whole thing will come loose. Now 
as you can see, I didn't wind up in the same spot over here as I was over there. So that's why I didn't want to cut right on that 14 inch line. actually loose from the other and uh, all I have to do is cut from this hole to that one and that one to that one and then that thing will be free. Now the problem is going to be once this gets to this point it's going to be really really shaky up in here so sometimes you might have to have somebody help you and if it gets to that point somebody might have to lay down the camera and help me. Okay, so now that we've got uh, that hunk out of there, uh, it makes it easier for you to grind and get to this part right here. So once again, what we're going to do is we have to come to this 17 inch mark right here and right here. But we're going to take just this part of it off. We're going to leave this lip on the top of each side. And our butyl tape, of course, will take, uh, we'll, we'll go under here and supply enough, uh, you know, of the void uh, so it, it will actually hunker down. Uh, you, otherwise you want it to be as flat as you can possibly get it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grinder and I'm going to grind up here right up close to uh, you know the, the corner there on each side of this and then we'll probably knock it loose and then I'll go back in and clean it back up and finish it on up. <laughs> I've gotten it to a pretty good point where I think I can probably hit it with my hammer now and knock pretty much most of it loose. Still maybe hanging on a little bit. So once you get that little hunk off, you're just going to clear out everything back to that point of 17 inches. Okay, so we have of course gotten rid of this whole member right here. We've cleaned all this out. We've made sure all these lines are nice and 90 degree angled. And uh, we've left this lip right here. And basically we've left that lip because if you're using inch and a half tubing this actually causes this this is actually inch and a half from here to here but it will actually cause it to go down further than your inch and a half tubing if you cut this all the way out so um, you leave all that stuff there and of course don't forget to put your butyl tape on the bottom of it the part that actually hits the ceiling now what we're getting ready to do we're getting ready to take the frame and we're going to place it up in here and we're going to uh, be sure that we measure to make sure that we're centered and then we'll also put it in here and mark our line that we're going to cut in the roof and that's our 14 inch box that we're cutting in the roof okay so Sean's gonna Sean's my helper now and he's gonna go ahead and put this up there this may be Sean's first YouTube video to where he's gonna make he's gonna hit thousands of views. I'm sure everyone wants to know how to do this. Okay, so we got the box up there. Once again, we're not trying to place it up there for any reason. Okay, so you should be able to stretch your tape across. You should be right at eight and a half in the center of each of the beams, in the front and the back. So you want to make sure that you're on the, on the eight and a half in the front and the back. This needs to come over that way just a hair. Where's that, that, that hammer in there? Make sure to do it that way, bro. <laughs> that's my head. I can just see you. are hitting you right in the head. Okay, that's close enough right there. So now Sean's going to hold this in place, and I'm going to mark my 14-inch box, and I will come back with my grinder and cut out. Now you can mark this box a different way if you'd like to. This just seems like the easiest because you've always you've already got a box. You know it's 14 inches, and you can just cut it out from that. 
and that's what we're doing. Now that you've got your hole cut 14 by 14 in the ceiling, the next thing to do is to put your frame in that hole. Now, before you put your frame in, it shouldn't look like this when you put that up there to the ceiling. You're going to need to go to your metal store and buy some butyl tape. Okay? Uh, you cannot have steel touching aluminum. If, it do, if you do, it's going to start corroding and it will start, uh, basically it will make your aluminum rust. I know a lot of people think aluminum doesn't rust, but it will if it keeps in con constant contact with steel. It will actually rust the aluminum out on your roof. So you need butyl tape not only on this side, but also on the other side if you're reinstalling your original uh, aluminum ceiling panels, and which we will be doing that on this bus. So you want to be sure that you got butyl tape and peel the backing off, and then we're going to put it up, and we're going to match up the hole up there. Okay. So after we get that installed and get that in place where it's supposed to be, if you fit it right, everything should just glide right in pretty easily. I'm gonna let you measure before I stick. Yes. We'll measure measure it for fitment, and be sure. Now, actually, you really just want to line up with your box. Okay, so wherever your opening is, you're going to want to line it up with that opening to make sure that it has, you've got the right place for your seal. Because the main part about this right here is maintaining a proper seal on the top for your unit. So you basically just want to make sure that you get that uh, uh, frame right on the side of that seal, or the, on the side of that, uh, that hole. You want it to line up. Uh, and then, of course, what you'll do is you will weld that to the frame pieces here. Now, you're not going to see me weld because I'm not a good welder. Uh, so I'm not going to show you me doing that. Uh, you can watch somebody else weld if you'd like to do that. But anyway, uh, that's what our next step is. And we'll show you the finished product when that's finished. So here we're at the last part of it. And this is the finished product. I told you that I wouldn't show you uh, show me welding because I'm not a welder. And so if you wanted to see somebody that was going to weld this perfect you probably wanted to watch a different video, but um, this uh, will tell you exactly how you need to do this uh, to get your units in and get them framed out well and make sure they don't fly off the top of your roof. So uh, this is the finished product. As you can see up here, uh, should be a little bit closer. Uh, we've welded, of course, here, here, and here. Uh, and then we've welded here, here, and here. And it's to that main member. And so this thing is securely fastened to the top. And then we'll just bring our roof mount up there and set it on and the rest of it is pretty easy all you do is bolt it in and it's done so uh thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this and i hope that it it will because uh, i know when i was when i started looking at this there was no way uh, i could find any help anywhere nobody could help me or tell me uh anything on youtube about it i've seen people try to put it together with with uh two befores and things like that up there it's just a bad idea <laughs> okay for a lot of reasons don't do it with two befores do it the right way one and a half inch 11 gauge steel and weld that into a box and then do the rest of it. That way uh, you, you'll make sure that it's not going to fly off the top of your roof and it's not going to leak. So that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed it.